Hi, I'm Rachel Cohen. And I'm Sandra Davis, and this is El Camino Reality. If you've been seeing a lot of purple lately, don't worry, you're not going crazy. You're just aware that Relay for Life is quickly approaching. To start things off, Relay is hosting a kickoff on Thursday, January 31st after school. Rachel Hambly, Ish Motadi, and our very own Sandra Davis report on the event. Relay for Life is a walk sponsored by the American Cancer Society. They're having their kickoff party on January 30th in Anderson Hall. Danielle Bernstein is a chair for the event. Kickoff is like a huge party that's like a celebration, kind of like to learn more about it. And there's going to be games and food and much more. Relay for Life is an event put on by the American Cancer Society. This year is El Camino's first baby relay. It's a chance to come be with your friends, clubs, groups, or whatever to just experience lots of fun, do fun things to raise money and awareness for cancer. If you, your friends, club, or team are interested in participating, come to kickoff after school on January 31st. This has been Ish Motadi reporting for El Camino Reality. Thanks, Ish. Hey, Sandra, do you think if I break my leg, I can get out of doing PE? I don't think so. Everyone at El Camino is required to complete a PE course, even if they're injured or disabled. Zach Halen and Jordan Azalai report on ECR's adaptive PE program. El Camino students know they must take at least two years of some form of physical education, whether they play on a sports team or just take a regular PE class. But what many don't know is that even kids with disabilities have to meet the same requirements or sometimes even more. Students with disabilities must take what's called adaptive PE. Sarah Spiegel teaches that class one period a day here at El Camino. Adaptive PE is a class for students who may need a smaller environment, who may need extra work on, or extra, excuse me, extra help on certain skills. Every student in the PE has a goal, so we work on a goal throughout the year, and we try to get, we try to get all the skills that we need to play sports and activities outside of school and inside of school. Helping Ms. Spiegel out are several aides, who not only have to assist their own assigned students, but all help out with the rest of the students in the class. Basically, we're just here to help everybody participate however they can in their, to their fullest of their abilities. In the class right now, um, I'm, I'm assisting a student and I just have to make sure that she dresses and puts her clothes on the right side, you know, the right, the proper way, and that she gets all her stuff out of her locker and to the lunch benches on time, and then I'm to assist in the classroom with all the other children. Currently enrolled in Adaptive PE are nine students. With a variety of disabilities, one of them is the sophomore, Jordan Azale, who deals with a visual impairment. We play basketball. We play soccer. Um, you know, stuff like that. We do stretching. We run. We go to the um, weight room for to lift weights, you know, bench. Stuff like that. We do push-ups, sit-ups, um, burpees, if anyone knows what that is. Uh, um, yeah. Reporting for El Camino Reality, this is Zach Halen. Give me an E! E! Give me a C! C! Give me an R! R! What's that spell? E-C-R! Wow, Sandra, you make cheerleading look so easy. Oh, thanks. But in reality, it's a lot harder than it looks. That's true. Reporters Sebi Petrono, Luke Chayo, Piper Harris, and Kylie Best report on the ups and downs of cheerleading. Making it onto the cheer squad is a coveted goal at just about every high school in America. But is it all about the looks, or is cheerleading a competitive sport requiring skill and technique? Ashley Heim is a varsity cheer captain. Before, to be on varsity, you needed a back handspring, but as of right now, you just need to do good amounts of jumps, which consists of toe touches or hurdlers or pipe jumps, and just be spirited. Though it may not seem like it, cheerleaders have a high rate of injuries. Megan Gray is a cheerleader who endured various injuries. 
Injuries are very, very common in cheer. I've been knocked out at least probably five times before. I've had five black eyes. I hurt my wrist. I got a concussion. I broke my nose. And um, I twisted my ankle like five times. Cheerleading focuses on individual skill, but also focuses on teamwork and cooperation. The different positions in cheerleading, well, normally there's different positions just in stunts, and that would be a main base and a side base, a back spot, a front spot, and a flyer. Cheerleading, like any other sport, has its fair share of drama. Drama, it's like just stupid drama, like we fight over little things like where you're going to get placed in the dance and then what stint you're going to be in. Um, it gets hard at times because sometimes you guys just want to like take a break, but it's a lot of fun. El Camino's cheerleaders show the hard work and skill put into being a cheerleader. For El Camino Reality, this is Sebastian Petrona. From all of us here at El Camino Reality, have a great day. And stay sharp, conquistadors. And stay dry. Here's an audio clip from Pharaoh Malik Torn's new album, Superdance. Make sure to tell your friends to check us out on YouTube or at our website, ecrjournalism.com. in my chest, and the stacks that sell my jeans, DJ on the ones and two so we're about to blow the club to smithereens, then I see this girl, dancing on the floor, and I swear, she dance so good, she can put on a show, should I walk up to her, and take the show.